Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, the host of Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for the end of life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live at the end of our lives and it's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and what we don't want for ourselves. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care unit. Together, we explore the various paths to life ending. Together, we can make sure that these difficult conversations are easier. Together, we can make sure that our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. If you're ready to join us, we ask, navigate the journey. Now, you know, over the last six months, we have invited members of various religions and traditions to talk about the end-of-life customs in their culture. Today, our guest is a friend whom I have known for, I don't know, <laughs> since we were in the, the, the Harris administration. And I look forward to talking to him because he is from the Filipino community, and that is the one community that we have not had a guest to talk about, and it's, it's a big community here in Honolulu, and it has all kinds of things and all kinds of people, and one of the joys and pleasures of living in Hawaii is that we get to share in everybody's culture, the food, the songs, the dance, everything, and it's just wonderful. And JP has been one of those people that has shared his culture, not only with me, but with everybody. So, aloha, JP. Aloha. JP is the executive director of the Filipino Medical Association of Hawaii. Did I get that right? That is good. <laughs> Welcome, JP. Mabuhai. Mabuhai. Yeah. Yes. So, Tell us all about JP, and then about the Medical Association of Hawaii, the Philippine Medical Association of Hawaii. Well, uh, JP, I would say in uh, in a few words, is a knot who wants to share uh, whatever is God-given uh, talent or resources uh, that he has with the people before he gets to and the journey. <laughs> uh, JP, I have to tell you, is the person at the uh, Mayor's Office of Culture and Arts who taught me how to make magic. <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was a long time ago. Yes. But he is so good at, at creating and making things happen. So, tell me about, now, where were you born? Where did you I was born in the Philippines, Nabua Camarines Sur is my town. Where? Say that Nabua again. Nabua Camarines Sur. It's at the south southern tip of Luzon, mm -hmm. as opposed to Ilocos up north. Yeah. So you're Ilocano? Is um, that the, the bi language? Uh, Bicolano. Uh, Bicol. Bicol. B it's B cool. Okay. B e c o o l, but b i c o l is the correct uh, pronunciation uh, spelling, and uh, we're kind of well very devoted to the Lady of Benya Francia, who is enshrined at uh, Salt Lake. It's a, a Catholic, Catholic icon, yeah, which, uh, which is very miraculous and helps uh, heal the sick and all that stuff. So, with devotion. So anyway, it's uh, that's a little bit. Uh, it's a part of our culture, actually. Okay. Now, now tell me about the Bahi. Bahai? No, the clinic. Oh, ba ba Bayanihan. Bayanihan. Uh, Bayanihan clinic, clinic without, without walls. walls is an affiliate of the Philippine Medical Association of Hawaii. Um, now it's a clinic without walls. It's a clinic without walls. Graphically. People go to clinics right. without walls because there is, there is no bounds to it. Like we have an office, like this is not our office, but uh, it's the language 
uh, elite of Lanakila, they assign um, immigrants without medical insurance mm -hmm. to doctors if they need medical assistance for free. It's a free service that we give to newcomers to, uh, to Hawaii since 1997 mm -hmm. when it was founded. So with that, we serve like 100 immigrants a month. Wow. I know. And that's for free. And we have uh, volunteer doctors, about um, 100 of them, uh, uh, from the Filipino community. And we serve not only Filipinos, but all other ethnic groups. So, but I would think that because the Filipino doctors, there's you don't have a language issue like you would if you went to... No, luckily we don't, because education in the Philippines is very much English and... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, we have Tagalog subjects, mm -hmm. but... Well, I was just thinking that as your immigrants come in, the, the language... But it, 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 you, that's not an issue. It, it is an issue when it comes to like expressing the, the emotional sentiments of like, uh, when you say in the vernacular, ulao, if you, uh, you don't understand that. Well, it is. They could mean dizzy, and dizzy can mean so many things in English, and they would not know how to explain or explain that thing. So it's always good to, it's advisable that you see uh, a doctor who is familiar with your culture. I mean, f not only for Filipinos, but also for other um, uh, ethnic groups. So you see, what, a hundred new people a month, you said? Yeah. Oh, some of them are repeats. Mm -hmm. But we are, since they don't have any insurance, if they qualify, they're marginalized, you know, we take them. How many doctors do you have? Uh, we have like a hundred, easily a hundred doctors, providers, uh, volunteers, and uh, not, these are not limited to Filipinos. We have um, non Filipino doctors who are serving this group of people. So this is only on Oahu? Now we are expanding to, uh, um, it's in the drawing board, we're expanding to Kauai for now and Big Island. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Because rural medicine is just, in Hawaii, is terrible. <laughs> it's, it is, it's just terrible. So, so I'm glad to hear that. Yes, uh, the, like 1997, this is when it started. Mm -hmm. And you've been there all that time? Um, yes, in a way, doing my favorite shows, fundraisers for them, until um, I got into the administrative part in 2007. So now you talked about your shows. So the doctors do the sh This is the main fundraiser of Bionian Clinic Without Walls. We call the production company Doctors on Stage. And these are doctors who have special talents, talents to sing and dance and be hands and be themselves and distress our unstress themselves after the clinic hours. They love it. And you and, and you take it on the road, do you? Or or do you perform how do you people come you know, where do you perform? We well, the first show we had was in we tested it in Maui and it worked, then the Hilton and then we had Blaisdell a concert hall. Big fill it up. Yeah, filled up. And uh, we had it at Crack Center and the Filipino Community Center, Farrington Auditorium. We've been uh, a year after year after year, or actually at least every two years when we do the production. This is wonderful. And so that's the money that, that, that the keeps the clinic going. Going, yes, yes. Because we have, so we have sponsored patients, young people, young person who um, had leukemia and was history out of it now. Um, we had to send him to, um, to Cambridge, to California for, mm -hmm. for special 
So, so you have to pick up the tabs for? For some, yes. And so with leukemia, that means moving for some, a length of time? A, yes. And his family, and oh, that's, how much does something like that cost? I have no idea. Some of them are donated, but some uh, doctors, they can talk to each other and have some accommodations, so not everything is free, but sometimes the board and lodging will have to be. Yeah, I would think um, that, yeah. You know, because if, if, if you got to move the here, family, too. Yes. Or I guess. Yeah, at least one. At least one, and yeah. If, if, if the patient is, needs a chaperone, then. But I, it will, I would think that given the the severity of the illness, they would like to have a family yes, member. Yes, And this is like very personal stuff, like. So what else, what else do you see? What else do you, the, your, uh, your organization, what else do they do? Um, we do medical missions to the Philippines. Medical missions. Yeah, this is, we're now planning the 11th. Sometime in July, this will be in Pangasinan. Where is that? Pangasinan is central Luzon, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and maybe another um, marginalized area in Manila, Metro mm -hmm. Manila, which we always do uh, before going to the provincial areas. So, uh, with a medical mission, what happens? We have uh, doctor volunteers and nurses and den dentists and and uh, we bring medicines. We get them from here. We solicit money from the community. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a big and sharing yeah. and stuff. And um, and so and you so collect money here to buy the medication and the and transportation, and then you take oh, it. Oh, the, the the doctors and the transportation and the hotels are. Um, Shouldered by the doctors. Oh, they pay for that they, themselves. They pay for the own. That's why it's difficult to be volunteered because there is some strings there. You have to pay for your own um, lodging and transportation. Well, well. But that's tax deductible. <laughs> that's the cost of doing business. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. But so, how often do you do this? Um, we're doing it once a year at least, some years two, twice, and like the Tacloban calamity where there was a tsunami, we yeah. were there in a month, within the month, right after it happened. So we're quite open to where the help is needed. We but as large as the Philippines, my goodness, how many islands are there? 7,000. Oh my. <laughs> Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. As some teeny weeny ones, some big ones. But, but how? I mean, because you can't possibly serve all those people. Oh no, that's why. Um, when people say that uh, we they don't need a medical mission, I say like, okay, that's fine. But deep within, we know, like, the. Uh, uh, the pyramid of economics in the Philippines is yes. so broad at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost everybody needs. Everybody needs. And uh, with that, we give free medication, medicines we get from here, and we even leave uh, continuing supply, supplies for like three months, five months. Mm. Well, Vitamins even. And vaccinations and things. Oh, uh, if needed. If needed. If needed. Well, uh, we're going to go to break, oh. and we'll be right back to talk some more about JP and this, these wonderful doctors. Now, you have to tell us more about the doctors. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to youtube.com, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me.
Okay. And we yeah. have a form. Now we're going to see Aaron some Gunn. of your uh, uh, things from your webpage. Are you the oh. brother of Aaron? Yeah. Oh. This is this is in the Nagura. They were doing uh, we don't want the so, uh, dance, uh, board of Dr. Uh, Dr. and Dr. And our neurologist. I have this. Uh, when was this? Uh, this so, yes, well, uh, the big hat to all our new uh, members to do with the Philcom Center and go back to the community. So we're preparing for that, and maybe we we'll have the uh, the bamboo band. What's a ba what is that? A band, old bamboo instruments. I know the bamboo instruments. Yes. There you go. Yeah. But that's a t um, we're trying to get that one. You, do you have one of those? Yes. Oh, good. At Philcom Center. Yeah. That's why uh, the the incoming president, who is the president right now, wants to focus on Filipino. Oh, yes. So. so now, tell us about the Philcom Center. What is that? Oh, <laughs> Philcom Center is. Um, is the building that was constructed for Filipino activities, mostly um, by donation, by charity, and we, they still owe money. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, that's a quite a building. B yeah. Yes, because it's very nice. It it's is lovely. It's crawling on, on, on Waipaho Street, mm -hmm. and um, it has a um, a ballroom, a computer room, a music room, uh, some areas for rent, clinics, and uh, real estate people, dentists. Play. Do you work out there? I was. I was when I, I did when uh, when Toy Ari was there. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. He asked me like, join, come join, and <laughs> let's see what happens after I retire from the city. Yeah. yeah. Now spent four years. Let's talk about the the culture of the Philippines. Now we and we know there's two different languages here in Ho in Honolulu, Tagalog and Ilocano. That's in Honolulu. Those are the ones. Yeah. We, so what what are the differences? Is it just the location? What what are the differences? No, it it, it goes the, back more than a hundred years ago when oh, they started recruiting farmers from the Philippines to the, come here. To come here. Mm -hmm. and most, of the, uh, most of the people they invited, they got in, were from the Ilocos region. Mm -hmm. um, there are some political innuendos about that, like why they went there, the, the secluded area, and tried to get these people to come in here and find. So that was more regional. Um, and uh, and uh, they got mostly Filipinos. Uh, the other regions came in um, on their own by other means, but like through the military when they started recruiting U.S. Navy, oh, yeah. armies, all the stuff, and uh, and so on and so forth. So it's the best. Uh, the joke here is like if. Uh, you are Filipino when you are Ilocano, and um, if you don't, if you're Tagalog, you're not Filipino. How okay. come? No, no, it's a joke. Oh. It's a joke because like <laughs> most, mostly like most most of the people here are Ilocano. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. I'm a minority here. A minority among a minority. I'm all, I'm, I'm all the <laughs> come on. No, come I'm, on. I'm blend. I blend. I love these people. They are my people. Yeah. So you blend well. And you know, um, I know the Filipinos are basically Catholic. Big, 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 big. So that makes it difficult for so many things, I guess. What do you mean, so many things? Uh, because they will always re go back to. Oh, I'm a Catholic. I shouldn't do this. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, now I should have committed the sin. Duh. Okay. That kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. All right. Well, I just now for the people that are watching, we have been supporting this bill, medical aid and dying, and the biggest problem with that is the church. True. Um, and and I, my thought on that is.
is that because this does not compel anyone to do it, what is the opposition? It would be different if we were mandating that everybody has to do this, but when it is just your choice, what, why is it that the church is in opposition when the bill is about choice? And it's not, it's only open to people that want to choose it. It's not, you don't mandate that the doctors do it, mm -hmm. you don't mandate that other people. So what's, what's the issue here? Uh, planning. There's so many issues in almost all sectors. Like, okay, I can answer for religion. No, under the, it's, okay. like that, but uh, it's there. We all know. Yeah, we know it's oh, there. Well, it's there, and they have their own um, concerns. The doctors themselves, when uh, I've heard them say, like, when I took my oath, it was to give life mm -hmm. to preserve life so it's difficult for them to really uh in a way look at uh, um medical aid assist assisted well no it's not suicide assisted that one so no but uh, let me tell you the difference this is only open to people who are terminally ill and the cancer is killing them they're not killing them i was getting yeah. i was getting to that too because again that's also one sector because, like, almost all of the doctors that I know uh, talk to their patients about uh, signing, um, what do you call it now? Medical uh, aid and dying? Yeah. yeah. That one. So they talk to them, and, and it's a choice. It's a choice. And that's all And you can always change. And you can change. You can yeah, change. You can change. So, um, it's not really a problem, because well, there were instances too that people have been changing of decisions because <laughs> they find out, oh, I'm alive, so <laughs> maybe I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. So. But that's part of it too. That you yeah. in the bill it says you can rescind this. Yes, yeah, you don't yes. have to do this. And so many people, and that have gotten the prescription, don't take it. You know, they say, well, it's here if I want it. And then, yeah, I think um, one thing that's good with with those is with, with the system that they're being asked to sign is they establish uh, the protocol, right. like uh, who will you contact right. at this stage of your life, mm -hmm. and the people have their names, emails, and everything, and phone numbers and addresses. So it makes it easier for, for the providers to, to, to go through the thing. Otherwise, they will not know to call in we had, of need. Now, we had two Catholic priests early in the, the and they suggest that you have a meeting with all of the family there. So mm -hmm. everybody is on board, everybody knows, you get to talk this and your ob objections and your wants and the, but you have this conversation yeah. so the family understands exactly, not not just this, not just medical aid and diet, but exactly what the patient mm -hmm. wants. So that you don't have somebody show up from California and say, oh, well, you didn't do this to grandma. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I guess uh, it all, you know, it's a personal thing. Yeah. And instead of pointing at what other people do, let me just say, uh, I think it's, it's better that you talk to your family about it before. Before, yes. Before. Mm -hmm. So it's just like orienting them, educating them about what's happening in your life. And then things will be easier for them to cope up with when the need arises. Yeah, if it arises. If it arises. If, yeah. So, so uh, that is really, um, in today's paper in the Civil Beat, they had a, a poll that says, um, let me read this to be sure it's right, support is strong in Hawaii for medical aid in dying. Mm -hmm. And two-thirds of the poll respondents say it's time to act. And it's exactly what you and I are talking about is choice. And that's what our program is about. Yeah. That's why we have visited with people from all kinds of 
cultures and traditions and religions to talk about what they do. What What is the culture? Uh, the Buddhist uh, told us how they have a, a appreciation event before the person passes, where you tell them all the things about how you love them and what you appreciated about them, rather than what Christians do with a funeral after the person's gone. It, it becomes a little bit uh, <laughs> confusing <laughs> and entertaining yes. when you talk about how people do prayers mm -hmm. about uh, the dead or the dying. But um, I guess another consideration would be economics, like, oh. can you really afford? Oh, uh, you know, nationwide, the statistics are $10,000 a day in the hospital. A day. Yeah, I mean, which, of well, course, we'll always say that that is not enough to to end a life. Yeah. I mean, it will take whatever. So you should be home. We should be home, not yeah. hooked up with all but those wires and things. There's also a thing is like you talk to God, mm -hmm. to your God, and tell him, Lord. Well, that's what the uh, Muslims said they do. Give they sing me. and 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 pray and I talk. I them this little bit. Yeah, and they talk, and they they pray you over to the next side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it, it's wonderful to see all these different True. traditions mm -hmm. and the way people handle this. And it's been a pleasure spending time with you, as always. And you will come back and visit us again. Oh. If needed, I would. What do you mean, if it needed? <laughs> um, we have so many things going, right? We do, yeah, we do. So but we, you will, along. and then you'll bring us the doctors and the music and what have you. Well, in fact, they're very busy. No, I, I meant mean. the, the tape. Of the oh, okay. oh yeah. yeah. Um, you can do that. Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, you will come back. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you again for spending time with us. This is a real pleasure. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.